Hello, um, today it's um, 30th of July and I'm with a special guest, singer-songwriter Alex Holm. How are we doing? All right, um, thanks for joining me on the podcast. No, thanks for having us. All right, and I noticed recently you've done a few gigs and that, so um, what was it? Was it Himley, your most recent? Yeah, it was the, the first ever Black Country Music Come um, yeah. down at Himley Hall. So that was a, a bit of a surreal experience playing Himley Hall because I've been there, you know, walked the grounds many a times but never thought we'd be playing there so that was good. Yeah, yeah yeah and what was um what was was that your, your biggest crowd um yeah under the sort of project that we're doing at the moment uh, i think there's about three thousand people there mm. um strange lineup to be on yeah you know with the the logs of little mix and Sp- oh, spice yeah. girls and things <laughs> but uh you know it was great to sort of see how you know how many people turned out and um that you know the dudley boy was trying to do that sort of thing for yeah you know, local artists, so it was great to be part of it. Was there any more like local artists except for Little Mix and that? That was a bit good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, got a lot of respect for like the local artists. Um, on the bill that day was uh, Jess Silk, oh, yeah, Mr yeah. Turner, um, uh, James Stevens, who was a part of um, Empty Can. Hmm. Um, I'm just trying to think who else has slipped my. So, um, Sam Drazy, he's a very talented singer mm. songwriter as well. Yeah, so it's so it's just nice to be able to catch up. Yeah, with him. I just still played at um, the Stade Open. Um, oh, was it year anniversary? Okay, yeah. Yeah, she was she's really good. She's yeah, she's very like, good. A good she's, guitarist as well. Yeah, she's very talented. I mean, you know, she knows um, what she wants to sort of convey in the music, mm. and I really sort of admire that. Um, yeah, in an in an artist. Um, but yeah, she's great. Um, everybody, everybody. On the bill was great, really. Um, yeah, it's just so nice to see local artists getting, you know, having a platform to sort of get their music out to a wider audience rather yeah. than just having to play sort of small pubs and mm. things like that. So. Was that your most recent gig? Yeah, I mean, we did a session. Yeah, we did a session on, you know, midweek. Yeah. In Manchester for uh, the narrowboat sessions, that was pretty cool. Um, oh yeah. But as a band, that was our. our uh, latest and biggest gig um, oh. and we realised the other day that we've only actually played 10 gigs together so um, we're, we're really happy with where we're at at the moment yeah. and um, we're looking forward to sort of playing more gigs mm. now, so. How many are in your band? It's four of us um, but then we also now um, are playing a few more shows with the Roseborn duo so Julian oh, and Becky yeah. um, and we just feel like it's really nice to sort of share different sides of what we can do as a band because we're pretty versatile. Um, yeah. Flexible. Um, you know, we can sort of do the full band thing and then we can sort of do different takes of the songs. Yeah, and but, sometimes you do like you're at like acoustic gigs yeah, by yourself. Yeah, acoustic stuff myself, yeah, yeah, which again is, you know, shows some of the sort of more sort of delicate sides of what I do. Yeah, or... So um, today I'm wanting to talk to you and ask about your music career from the start um, till the, till now. Yeah. yeah. So um, who was it that got you into music? Um, I, I gotta say, I think it was my dad, really. Dad, yeah. and then later on, um, friends, because mm. my dad was always playing guitar around the house. Uh, he had like a little eight track recorder. Oh yeah. And uh, it was really, really like sort of primitive, like just. He used to record straight to sort of uh, the little cassette tapes, hmm. um, but he'd always be, you know, have friends around making demos and things like that. Um, so I think, re- and and also like he, he'd be the one taking me to gigs and oh. um, introducing me to that sort mm-hmm. of the live the live music really, which and, and taking me to gigs, you'd sort of see yeah. the other side of the band and the sort of electricity that sort of fill the room really. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's got to say it's my dad. Can you record your first ever gig? Uh, yeah, I can actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a first ever gig that my folks took me to was Simply Red. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's not really one that I'm gonna get <laughs> like, yeah, this was like sort of the moment I realised I, was, you know, I wanted to hit, hit the stage. Yeah. But you know, in all fairness, they put a show on. Mm. Um, you know, it's, the production was pretty good, so. I'm yeah. not gonna say he's bad. To be fair, I'm, <laughs> I'm not into them, but yeah. like they're a bit lovey dovey, in my opinion. Uh-huh. But like they're quite good. To be fair, no, he was all right. I mean, yeah, for a first well, kid, I was only a kid, like so. Yeah. I'm not really gonna. At least it wasn't like you know steps mm. or something like that. Was that in Wolverhampton or? It's Birmingham. Yeah. Was, yeah. 
So, um, what what was the music your dad got you into? Um, again, it's pretty like an eclectic mix, really. But like, mm. he's got he'd be listening to like you know uh, Bowie, <clears throat> uh, the Jam, um, specials, mm. things like that. Um, <clears throat> But then again, but then he'd, it also, he'd also have things like uh, Simply Red and You and yeah, Kai yeah. and things like that, uh, Annie Lennox. Hmm. So it was just a massive mix, really. But I, th- I think I sort of, I, t- I always took that on board because I think when I try and write music, I don't like to sort of, you hear a lot of bands now and they yeah. go in one direction, not, not not one direction, but they go in one direction. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like I think when I write music, I like it to sort of be a bit of a soundtrack of your day to day life. And yeah, uh, yeah. so some some days it's going to be pretty, you know, mm. fast paced, and some days it's going to be a bit more chilled. So and like that was the Beatles at first, and they just went on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, can you recall when you first ever started writing music? Yeah, I first started. I think writing music when I was about. 15, 15, and I couldn't really play an instrument then, so I'd use that eight track recorder of my dad's got yeah. left in the attic, and I think I found that out and all the little bits and pieces. And I thought, oh, it'd be a good idea to sort of make some, yeah, make some yeah, tracks. Yeah. And so I think I originally started off just by like mm. just singing and like humming tunes and then oh, trying, well. trying to write lyrics out of the top of it. Um, but then, a fr- like a few friends at school. Um, Matt Partridge, he's also one of the great sort of Midlands artists. Yeah. Um, I remember at school, like he started his own like, little label, and we'd all sort of make our own albums and stuff, and oh. that was good fun. But um, yeah, I didn't start playing guitar properly till I was about mm. 16, 17, and then that's that's when the demo started to get a bit. They weren't very good. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's when I started to take it more seriously. That was a start then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so did you teach yourself guitar? Yeah, I taught myself. Mm. Um, like my dad like started me off a little bit, but mm. then I just found it easier taking a, a book with like all the pictures of the chords mm. and, and sitting and burrowing away, really. And then, But I think more so than, than learning the guitar, I think what I enjoyed and I found you know, most pleasing about sort of writing the songs was that, like... Yeah, yeah. I could get the eight track, and I I sort of was more into my art, like drawing and painting and things like that. Oh. When I was growing up, but I enjoyed sort of the same sort of process with songwriting and just you know exp- experimenting with different sounds mm. and affecting the sounds and layering it up, um, you know piece by piece, yeah. and and that's what I really found enjoyable. Mm, cool. So what gave you the motivation? Um. I think like after my dad had, like sort of got me into music and things like that. I think um, going to gigs and especially like going to see friends' yeah. gigs and you know we we sort of travel up and down the country with friends mm. watching them play. I really just enjoyed you know the, the sense of exploration and going to yeah. different places and meeting new people, but also like just seeing friends and how much they were enjoying it on stage. Mm. Um, yeah, um, I think that's what really sort of like resonated with me. I thought, that's, I, it, I didn't think this is what we're going to do, but I thought yeah, it'd yeah, be yeah. nice to get a band together and sort of spend some time making music with friends, mm. really. Um, and then, yeah, that's where it started mm. from. So, like, how old, what, what, whenabouts was it um, when the band got together, the Lions? Uh, the band, the Lions got together um, in 2003, I think. Mm. Um, that was probably the first ever uh, proper rehearsal that we had. We got together before then a few times, like with different people. But the lineup that started the lineup yeah. properly was about two thousand and three, mm. <laughs> with no real intention of like, oh yeah, we're going to do this and yeah, take yeah, it yeah. on the road and stuff. It was just literally we're going to get together and write some songs, mm. and it just yeah just carried on from there, snowballed mm. a bit. So what was the bands and, and artists, would you say, that influenced the band? Um, I think it was all, at the time, like all that sort of Britpop uh, yeah. era. Uh, and, you know, the legends and stuff. I mean, oh. we all had very similar interests. Um, things like, 
I don't know, Alice is a guest of Earth, mm. uh, Supergrass, Doves. Mm. Um, oh, the list could go on, really. Yeah. Um, Gomez was quite... Mm. It was a band that we all sort of seemed to enjoy a lot. Um, we were, I don't know, we were sort of a band that just did our own thing, really, and didn't try mm. to sort of fit into the, like the latest, yeah. like, you know, hype or... Um, sound that was going we sort mm. of just always did our own thing and kept ourselves to ourselves mm. and yeah so. so how did the name the lines come about <laughs> we uh actually sort of never really came up with that to be honest yeah we went to um it's i don't know the lines is, is a name that we can't even pronounce because of our accent it sounds like <laughs> lions or loins <laughs> um and yeah I don't know, I, I was, we was all going to change it, but we went to um, an open mic like the once and we hadn't sort of signed up for it, apparently mm. we had to sign up for it, but then we went, oh, we'll just go on next, like, and yeah, they called yeah. out this name, so we got up on stage, and this mm. band said, uh, oh, you know, what, we're on next, and we said, oh, no, we're on next, and they said, what, what are you called, and we went, and we heard, like, you know, the, the, you know and so we said, the lines, yeah, so we yeah. said, oh, no, we're the lines, and they went, oh, no, we are. Mm. And I said, and I said, well, how long have you been called the Lions? And we went, oh, months now. And I went, oh, we only thought of it the other day, so you can keep it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, <that> sounds. <laughs> and we we actually did keep it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so what bands and that did you support or support you like? Uh, gosh, I mean the list goes goes on really. I mean, uh, one of the first ever gigs we played in Birmingham, we. We headlined, and I think there was a band called Snowfield on there. I think they were called, and they yeah, went yeah. on to be editors. Oh, uh, yeah. They got signed on that gig, yeah. Um, but then, at, you know, at the time that we were together, we supported um, the Maccabees, oh. um, mm. which were great. Mm. That was great shows they were. Um, we did Ian Brown in mm. Amsterdam, oh, yeah. which has one, been one of the best memories of ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> I should call us in Charlatans. Uh, we played Frequency Festival with the likes of Kasabian and oh. Prodigy Radiohead. Uh, we, did, we went to the States and we did New York. Mm-hmm. Um, Aust- South by Southwest and Aust- Austin, yeah, Texas, yeah. that was great. Pete Doherty, um, the band. Yeah, we, yeah, we supported we, some big artists, to be fair, then. Oh, I we, didn't know. We, yeah, we've had, uh, we've had a good run. Uh, I knew about Ian Brown, but I didn't know like about Ocean Colour Scene and... Yeah, Sorry, we things. did we did a tour with Ocean Colour Scene, and did about ten dates with them, mm. and that was good. I mean, we we played, some, you know, to this day I'll always sort of be very thankful for the opportunity that we had. I mean, we played Continue. like the Brixton Academy, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, twice. Never thought we'd do it. This is what I mean. I like when when I think back to when we first started, I'd never, I'd never have said, oh yeah, we're gonna play uh, <laughs> the Brixton Academy, five thousand people. But it, yeah, it was awesome. Absolutely brilliant. So what was um, Ian Brown like in person? It was nice actually. Mm. Um, you know, cool as a cucumber, as they say. Yeah. Um, what do they call him? Monkey man. Or monkey, what? King Mon- monkey. King yeah. monkey or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, he's pretty quiet. Sort of keeps himself to himself, really. But like, you wouldn't we, have thought that to be fair. Yeah. You know, he's just a very real person. Like we spoke yeah. to him, and, and I said, like, you know. Thank you for having us and stuff, and he was like, oh, "Yeah, not a problem." And he told us a bit of history about the venue, and then he went on to sort of, you know, we were saying like how much we enjoyed certain songs, and he was like just saying, "Well, it's mm. just songs that keep the money coming in." Something. Yeah, and I, and I just uh, thought that was. At least he's honest. Yeah, I quite, I quite, yeah, I quite appreciated that. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I heard loads of good things to like about Stan Rose. He's like, you know. Have you heard of the Sankings, Glenn Sankings? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he said they supported the Stone Roses and apparently they're the nicest bunch of lads you'll ever meet or something they like are, that. They are, they Yeah. Yeah, I know a few people who have like, sort of worked with them and stuff there. Mm. I think what I think what people sort of forget is that they are just normal people, yeah, really, yeah. Um, like most musicians, but it's nice to hear that they sort of kept, you know, they're still quite yeah. grounded, like, rather than... Because you can meet some people and they're not, they're not the nicest people. But mm. Yeah, it's uh, he was great, to be fair. Um, he had a bit of a dance-off with our drummer and stuff at backstage later. Mm. Took the time to speak to us, so, you know, hats off to him. Can't, can't fault the bloke. Mm. Did you meet many other the 
the other bands you supported, like in yeah. prison, like yeah, we met them all. I mean, again, like Pete Doherty bought a t-shirt and a CD. <laughs> Told him we didn't have to, but you know, he gave us the money and stuff. Okay, and I thought, again, hats off to him because he gets a yeah. bit of bad press and stuff. Um, yeah. You now some probably. I don't believe worthy, it. Some not, you know, but um. He was good enough to have us on a few dates and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, I mean, I should, the last one I should have seen, they're great. Mm. Um, Maccabees were awesome. Like, they, you know, they sort of took the time. Still talk to Orlando occasionally. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's, it's funny when you talk mm. about it, but I never would have said, like, yeah, we'll do all that. You'd be supporting all those bands and that. And we did, yeah. Yeah. So did you get like did the band get really well known? Like, um, to a to a point, yeah. Mm. I mean, it's it's weird really because when I think if I think about if we'd have done it now, we'd have probably been bigger than we were back then. No. Oh. Uh, just because there just didn't seem so many avenues like festival wise, you'd get the big festivals. Yeah. There weren't that many smaller festivals like Why Not and Truck Festival, yeah. tram lines and all all that. Uh, and you know we we had a good following Wolverhampton. Mm. Um, we did the we sold out the the Wolf Run yeah. a few times, which is like thirteen hundred people, and then we had headline headline the Civic as well. Mm. Um, I think we did about two thousand there. Um, but I just I don't know it's it's, it's a yeah. funny thing there. Like I, I just wonder how many how, how I don't know with, with with the help of like this feeling and um, BBC introducing it how. How far it would have gone then? But, yeah. If if you think about it, like it might be easier now because like it's easier way, like easier ways of advertising the band now. Oh, def- that's what I mean. Like, do it all yourself, really. Yeah, I think now, it, I think we could have probably pushed it that bit further. Mm. To be fair, but um, yeah, hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, we we had a good we had good fun doing it. Um, mm. So yeah. So what was your gigs like? Uh, a bit rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> We, it was weird because we weren't like <coughs> we, I, don't, I don't think we were a band that were like sort of a rowdy rowdy lot but we sort of tried to get the yeah. you know the, the I always like to sort of try and involve the crowd to, to a degree so it's some yeah, kind of experience yeah. for them um, that they can sort of go back and say oh I remember that gig when that happened yeah, so. yeah. Um, but I think like some, I think some venues like <laughs> we were like oh now we've got the lines coming we need to yeah. like Get more security and stuff, and and I think it's just because some of the people that came to the crowd were just just got a bit overly excited. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, you know, I, to this day I'll mm. always thank everybody for their support in mm. that in that project because it was insane, really. Um, some of the experiences we had. I think at the time I was think I was like too young to notice the yeah, lines. Yeah. Like, I I didn't notice. Like the lines until I, I don't actually know when, but I, I heard the name yeah, yeah. like loads of times, and I just I remember like, but I don't remember like when I was younger. Yeah, I think no. my dad was into them. That might be, <laughs> but I don't remember like. Yeah, well, I mean, because I was yeah. young, I was like, when was it? Two thousand three, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was like three then. So. <laughs> Um, baby grow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think when I the, obviously when you get, first get into music, you get into like bands like the big bands mm-hmm. like the Beatles yeah, yeah, yeah. then you when you get older like when I got older I started to discover smaller bands yeah, and yeah, yeah. like upcoming yeah yeah so how long was the band together and what made you all decide to call it a day well we as I say we, we sort of like went through a few different um, <clears throat> line up changes and things like that yeah um, and then you know certain members left and in some ways it didn't quite feel the same yeah. Um, and then it got to a point where it just felt like it naturally ran out a bit of steam. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think uh, me personally, I I sort of got to a place where I was thinking like I'd like to do something slightly different or mm. sort of work on tracks a bit more myself, so I could sort of get the ideas out that I wanted yeah, to get. Yeah. Out. Um, it's like your own your your own boss type. Yeah, yeah. because like. You know, like what I found is I had ideas for songs, and I, I knew mm. how I wanted them to sound. Mm. But when you when you in a band with, you know, more people, it's you've got to take you've got to take their sort of mm. their ideas in, and that's cool. 
but when you're not getting the, when they're getting a track out mm. the way you want it to sort of sound, that can be a bit frustrating at times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it, I think we sort of pushed it quite heavily. Um, it's a hard game, you know, and, I don't and, know, and yeah. it, it does take its its toll on on you. So mm. I think it sort of just got to a point where we just. For me personally, yeah. I was like, oh, I think this needs to stop now. Not everybody felt that way, which, you know, I, I sort of get, but, yeah, it was, I think, I think it was the right time to sort of yeah. do, you know, we just, um, we got our album out, we'd, we'd done the City Call, um, and it just, yeah, just felt like it was time to wind it down. Yeah, it's like, it's that, I guess that's right with most bands, like, because some people might take over them, like, it's like Oasis, yeah. Noel Gallagher took over the band. Yeah, yeah. It's like one of those, isn't it? Yeah, people that, I don't think people see, like, it's not just for people going out and sort of playing some songs. There's mm. a lot more that goes on behind the scenes into, you know, just the whole setup really. Like, like, um, it's like, when you watch documentaries on bands and that, you realise, like, you think, like, oh, they have the perfect life, just going on tour all the time, but there's more to it than it's hard, you though, expect, it? like. It's hard. Mm. So, what was the gap between like when the band split up and you you go solo? It's a couple of years, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I was still writing music and playing guitar and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just need a bit of time off from it, really. Mm. Um, I'd lost sort of, not completely lost the sort of love for playing, but it it. it it's an industry that sort of can grind you down yeah, a bit. Yeah. Like, so I thought I'd just take a bit of time off and, and enjoy doing things like with friends and that. Like, because when you're in a band, like, you don't get that much time. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of time gets taken. Like, you you, you play gigs on nights yeah. and stuff like that. You have to play a lot to sort of try and get the name out there. And uh, so it was quite nice to have a bit of downtime, really, yeah, and, yeah. and sort of getting. I don't know, getting, your head, getting my head around things and just writing some new stuff. Mm. Would you say your solo stuff's very different to the band? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the band probably had mm. probably a bit more like a straight, oh, not straightforward indie, but he had that more like, um, you know, a bit of a, like a lad band sort of. Yeah. Which is never really mm. the intention that we went for. I don't, I don't know how we got branded with that really, but I guess it was sort of, you know, the sort of straightforward mm. stuff. Whereas this, the, the, the stuff I'm doing now, I think is a bit more cinematic. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a bit more uh, thoughtful in the in, you know, some of the arrangements and things like that, and some of the sort of sounds that I'm using. I'm just trying to yeah. experiment a bit more. Um, Oh, can... Be- because I can really. Yeah. yeah. Well, sh- you're the boss. In t- yeah. So, like, I can tell the difference, like, uh, th- between the lines and that. Like, I don't know. I think it's a bit more of a heavier sound with the lines, whereas, like, yeah, yeah. The, your stuff's a bit more mellow, in yeah. my opinion. Like, that's, that's what I like. Yeah, no, it's been said. I mean, I think when we've got like, the lineup that we've got now, mm. and, like, we, if you come and see us, it'll, it'll be different when we play live. Yeah. If it's a lot, it takes on a bit of a heavier sort of, like, um, I don't know, a heavier sort of like, yeah. Um, sort of, I can't think of the word I'm looking. Mm. Heavy sort of vibe. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. Like um, with the crowd and that. Yeah, but then when, because the the thing is like when when I did those original recordings, that was just me, with yeah. the producer, and we'd sort of build it up. But now we've got the band, and it's got a very energetic sort of. Yeah. In places, heavy sound. So mm. I'm quite yeah. We've just done some new recordings, and I think that sort of show like demonstrates what we are as a band more. So. Oh, oh yeah. So like, I forgot what I was gonna say then. <laughs> um, so um, yeah. How long have you been doing and been in your so- like, career so far? Like, um, what is it? Probably it's about fifteen years. Been doing it now. Mm. It's like, um. But like it's only been like the last year or so that it's um, mm. really ramped up. I mean, yeah, I've, I've been playing a lot of like with a band, but also doing a lot of acoustic things and yeah. getting off- offers from different places now, which is which is what you want really. So yeah, I went yeah. through a, I went through a phase and I was 
it felt like for like you know packing it all in and thinking this is this is no good and you know nobody mm. wants to hear it and uh, it felt like there was like, like you know a lot of bands getting a lot of opportunities and if you weren't in that clique mm. uh, you know it's no good um, but then I think now we've got the band and we're happy with the lineup and when people see us it, yeah. It's seeming to like sort of get a, like mm-hmm. a bit of a chain reaction. There's a lot of other things coming from mm-hmm. it now, which is good. I think I'd like the same feeling with the podcasts. Like, yeah, yeah. you just like was doing one series, and you're like, is it worth it? Shall I do another one and all this and that? And I don't know. I like you can't just. When I was thinking about the sex series, second series, I was like, I just can't stop it because I really enjoy it. Yeah. But then at the same time, you're like not getting any wage, Yeah, it's hard. Like... You just hit the nail on it. I think um, you can't stop it if you enjoy mm. doing it, but you can't help but feel but, like sometimes just a bit beaten by it. Yeah, you do. Like, then you got like family on your back, like, and it's yeah. like... Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. That when you got your board coming. <laughs> <laughs> It, like, it's hard, it is hard, and I think that's the thing. Like, like people always say to me, like, "Oh, you, you know, doing well, ain't you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing well. Like, I'm getting what I want to get out there." But in terms of like, it's not like nine to five job where yeah, I can wow. go right. I can live off this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, if you if you really enjoy doing something and you want to make it work, you you find ways of doing it. What my grandparents say, they say, do you get any money throughout doing this podcast? It's just like, yeah, I think people I, like grandparents. And they just, like that. I it's think the older generation yeah. don't un- don't understand like when you look at the likes. Like, if you you like, if well, if Oasis can make it, I think I can too. Like, yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, yeah. You just get motivated by yeah. that, then you go. I can see where they're coming from. In yeah, a way. yeah. <laughs>
So, um, when was it? Um, when was it? And um, when you released your first solo single or um, EP? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I released the first EP I put out was um, a first a drop and then a flood, which had four yeah. tracks on it, and that was when was that? Two thousand and fourteen, something like that. Hmm. Fifteen. Maybe. Yeah, it's a couple of years. <laughs> fourteen or fifteen, I can't remember. Um, because on Spotify, I think it's a different date. It's yeah. com- I don't know. I think a, I don't even know. I'll, uh, I've done a bit of research on it, but like, but then I saw like there was another single on that on the same year, and I was like, um, oh, is it that one or that one? <laughs> uh, it was a uh, oh. 2017. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, not that long ago. Yeah. I thought it was before then. Yeah. Um, you know what? I don't know. Days and years mm. and stuff. Just I'll just lose track of what day it is. Um, so, yeah. A couple of years ago. Um, mm. Put the first EP out. And then I released um, a single off that. Mm. So, it was Through the Storm. And Every Ocean was the first song. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah. I thought that was like, quite a good like sort of example yeah. of what sort of stuff I was doing but then I think when I'm writing influences and the way I, I sort of the songs I'm writing changes from day to day so mm. the next batch of tunes are another sort of display of where, mm. where we're at with the band and things I think there. Did you get much of a buzz off there in the first EP? Yeah it was really good actually you know we had a lot of support from BBC WM yeah. um, got quite a big you know bit of press off like uh, Birmingham Mm-hmm. Um, the news in Birmingham, yeah. the Express and Star, things like that. It's a nice um, kick start, really. Mm-hmm. And then put the trees, and then got a local lot of support in Nottingham, um, from the BBC up there. Yeah. Um, and then, really, I wanted to get some other things out, but with the, with the lineup change and things like that, we thought it was better just to sort of down sort of tools in terms of like mm. getting music out and just concentrate on getting our, our act together in terms of like a live show mm. writing new songs getting some demos done and things like that yeah would and uh, we found it really beneficial to mm. be fair would you say your inspirations are different compared to the bands um my inspirations i think are oh yeah i guess so but then uh, you know i've encountered new artists and yeah um and new bands in that time, I think, which have made me think, yeah, I, can't, I like that. I'd like to do something yeah, like yeah. that. But, um, but then, I, you know, I'm always in, in, influenced by the same things that I was, yeah, you know, in the past. Younger, but, yeah. but then, what we've got now is we've got new players, and their influences on the band are different. Oh, oh yeah. So, um, Sam, who's drumming now, he's a, he's a lot, he's a lot heavier. Oh, but. That's great. Um, you know, it brings like sort of. Mm. I mean, he's a phenomenal drummer, and uh, it's you know it's a great backbone. Then Hannah, super yeah. bass player. Um, I think she likes a range of things and stuff, and you can really hear that in the parts that she plays. Mm. And Steve, he's like sort of. I don't know. He's just, they're just phenomenal musicians. Mm. With all all three of them. So, but like he's got more like of a. Um, I seem to feel like a what's the word, like a more sort of traditional sort of guitar yeah. sound. And uh and then, you know, it brings that to to the different parts and really like adds life um you know, little melodies in the yeah. songs that I, I probably wouldn't have thought of. So it's it's not it is nice to have three great musicians to be working with rather than me sort of in a studio on my own. Mm. Um just trying to thrash it out that way really. Yeah. So recently you got nominated in the Black Country Music Awards for the best singer songwriter and best live act. So, yeah. how, how did you feel about getting nominated for um, those awards? Uh, it's alright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I honestly don't really get awards, mm. and I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I don't I don't really know what the point of them mm. is. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know because there's a few there's a few award ceremonies going on and at the moment and. Half the time, the you have, ones as well, aren't yeah, you? and half the time you have to either nominate yourself or get people to nominate you, then to vote for you. Yeah, it's but a bit that, fussed. but that, to me, just says like, look how many people I can get to vote yeah. for me, sort of thing. It's not fair. I don't, I don't get it. Um, but you know, at the same time, it is nice to get yeah. some recognition. 
Um, you know, we work hard, mm. and like you, you know, Extremely you know yourself hard. when you're doing the podcast and stuff. And when like you're not getting any recognition for it, it's like oh, it's, it's hard. That but, gives you a boost. Yeah, it, it does. You know, I mean, it was a good, it was a good night. It was nice to pick up an award for the best, best song. Mm. But if it's the best song, does that mean I'm the best songwriter? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> because there's many good bands out there as well. Exactly. So. exactly. And I, I've had this conversation with like, you know, somebody from the awards really, and I said, you know, when you're thinking about mental health yeah. in like any form of in any walk of life yeah. really, and I know there's a lot of talks of mental health in sort of the arts, you know, music. Yeah. You've got. To, I think people need to think about stuff like that because mm. if you're, you know, if you're putting these things on and you're saying, okay, this is the person that is the best ever songwriter, yeah. and you've got somebody else who really cares about their work and they're not getting nominated yeah. or, or you know, shown for like doing well, how, mm. what what knock on effect does it have on them? It, it's something to think about, really. It's nice you're having these awards to mm. get everybody together and. I don't know. I don't know. I really think they are. Really. Kind of feel the same way in a way. So I, I just think it's not fair on other bands, and it's just I don't know. Like because there's like so many good bands. Like, there is man. I, I, like at the moment now, like the, the, you know what? It, it's massive. Like this, the music scene in Birmingham and the Midlands. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. There's some really good bands. There's so many to talk to as well. Yeah, like yeah. it's just I don't. I don't know how. And like because everybody's. <clears throat> Taste is different. Yeah. Um, you know, you might think one band is really good, and I might say yeah. mm, it's not that great. Oh no! Yeah. So like, just awards based on mm. like how many friends you've got voting for you, and you can say to them, <laughs> vote for us. Mm. I don't. Know, I don't really know what 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 that proves to be honest. With me, indie bands, I feel like bands that help and come in that. I, with me, I'm like very open to them, like. Because I don't care what type of music they do, I think they need the support and that. And you want you want them to get up and that, like even if it's not the music you're into. Even yeah, if it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm not into heavy metal bands, but if it's a heavy metal band, I'd still like if I could, I'd still interview yeah, yeah, them and that. Definitely. Like try and do your bit, help them out, yeah, like, yeah. and it's just good to do that. There, there are good ways of like sort of highlighting, you know, musicians and sort of giving them a, a platform. Hmm. I just really do think, like, for the, for, you know, the good quality bands out there that don't even get nominated, yeah. and like I've seen it, and like I got put on a, a list, a few lists, and I was like, that's great, but where is I don't know, um, the Humdrum Express, yeah. Express Sleuth, uh, hmm. where is, um, Death by Stampede, you know the oh, oh, yeah. there's, there's just I just looked at some of that and I thought, oh, that, those are good names on there, but really they should be Amit Ditani on this yeah. country one. It, 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 you know, um, the assist. There's just loads of bands that yeah. you could sort of put in, in, in various places. And I just thought, um, maybe these guys should be on there. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is what it is and such is life. And yeah, There'll, there'll still be a war ceremony, so there's, oh. there's no point debate it too much is it? <laughs> yeah did you ever get nominated in the past or anything like that like in the band or um, uh, the band, <coughs> you know what no, there wasn't when we were in the band there weren't really things like the Birmingham Music Awards or the mm. Black Country Music Awards and I don't know the best trousers awards or whatever <laughs> like that. there was like the enemy awards but they yeah. had to sort of be on they're like bigger bands really yeah and, uh, yeah um no, I think we probably got the uh, nominated for the best accent award, maybe. Oh. <laughs> I, I think we all like around this area is the best accent. Wolverhampton, Black Country. <laughs> I think we might be the only ones that think that. <laughs> I don't know, like they say, our accent's like the closest to English you'll ever get. Yeah, mm. I, I, I have heard that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what are your, um, have you got any future plans and gigs? Yeah, I mean, the, the end of this year we sort of. We're just at, we're sort of gonna hit the road and play a few places outside yeah. of Birmingham and whatnot, and we're just sort of finishing off our our next release, uh, which I'll tell you more about next time. Okay. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 
we're just going to try and get out and play a few places that we haven't really sort of been to yet. Yeah. And then we're getting things in place for next year now. So uh, things like videos and artwork, mm. get the release out, um, which we're going to hope to do on vinyl and CD and oh. stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, there's a lot of sort of things. It doesn't look like we're doing that, that much. Like if you look at the socials, yeah. we're actually are, you know, behind it all. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So a question I'm going to start asking more often on and crashing in now. Um, is there any recommended indie bands or up and coming bands you got, or is it just any bands at the moment that you like? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, we've talked about a lot of them already. Um, yeah. Just try and get see as many sort of local, uh, unsigned uh, yeah. acts as you can. I mean, um, the other week we met. A band called Luna Rosa, yep. I think it was. Uh, Luna Rosa, they're from like Leicester Way. They oh, were really yeah. good, nice sort of mix of like you know indie with sort of post punk sort of. Set. I don't know. It's, mm. Yeah, they sort of reminded me of Shame a bit uh, oh. with like hints of like Stone Rose <coughs> in there. Um, but then you got bands like the Novus. I saw them oh, yeah. the other week. Their energy. Wicked, like no, so it's like their music on Spotify. So, like, well, on not just Spotify, but it's like when you listen to them, they sound so different. Like when you see them live, and yeah. you don't expect them to be that. Like, yeah, the yeah. man's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, this uh, obviously I sort of like I've met them or sort of known of them for yeah. a while, sort of been in the area, but um, they're just like really down to earth guys. But then mm. the energy that they put into the sets, they're great. Um, you got bands like The Claws, The Assist. Yeah, they're Iv- another good one. Ivory Wave, all doing the rounds. All like Ivory um, Sleuth, um, um, The Humdrum Express, Chris yeah. Glider, uh, Paper Boys. Mm. Oh my gosh, just literally. Um, the lads from Goddamn, I think, are, are yeah. just preparing to bring out a new album, which is going to sort of blow your heads off. Um Oh, I do stuff like this because I always forget <laughs> people and then think, oh, I should have mentioned. I'm the same, yeah. Jack Fletcher and his band, yeah. uh, he's, you know, putting in, you know, a lot of hours to mm. try and get his music out there now. Um, who else have we got from the Midlands? Blimey, is it? Oh, no, as soon as <laughs> I start talking, I'll, I'll, I'll think, yeah, I should have said so. so. <laughs> um Ryan Sparrow, um, yeah. the band called Mark as well, mm. um, musicians from ra- around this neck of the woods, and they're um, you know making some great music. Mm. I think you'll hear a bit more of them uh, coming through soon. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I got the assist and the nervous are on the lineup of series too. Yeah, good good choice. Yeah. Um, Good, like they're really genuine guys as well. Yeah, like, I've got well. a lot, I've got a lot of time and respect for them. Yeah, um, yeah, I keep bumping into the assist lads, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll it's always it's always good fun when I, when we when we bump into them. Mm. Um, they came up to our show in Sheffield. Yeah, and then we went down to them, but um, had Mikey playing the drums in the one song. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's it's wicked. I mean. It, it's good to have that sort of the buzz, that sort of community feel when you go and see bands and and they come and see you. So, yeah, yeah and that, I noticed like with some bands like you know the Novas, like when you see them live, you're like, you don't expect them to be that genuine. <laughs> like it's like you're like you know the tells all different people when they're off stage. Yeah, oh, I mean that's a good thing. I mean, mm. when people say to me like, oh, I wouldn't expect that. But I think if you're really into what you're doing, you yeah. can get lost in it, and, mm. and you can put that sort of face yeah. on the game face, I guess. But I like that. I like it when a band can put on an attitude and be different mm. people. Yeah, because there's some bands that've got the attitude, and then they just it's got just attitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, and it's all right, but I think like it's rock and I roll. think you know it worked back in the day for mm. Liam Gallagher and stuff but I think now if you're doing it you just look like a bit of an idiot really. mm. oh yeah it gets to a point when you get older yeah. and that yeah is there anything else you'd like to add to the podcast um <laughs> to keep listening to a, a live unsigned music there's a lot yeah. of it going on in the area really um 
if you don't know my music, check it out. Mm, Alex Allen. Yeah. I'll put the link. Yeah, yeah, you can find it on Spotify. Yeah. Got a YouTube, uh, Alex Allen, so yeah. IHM. But uh, yeah, just um, please check us out. Come and find us at a, a venue. Mm. Um, but all in all, just even support. your acoustic gigs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just go and check out some of those bands if you if you don't check out me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and 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 look out for next year where we should hopefully be uh, playing some some bigger shows um, for the new for the new EP. Oh bloody hell! All right for that then. Um, so. Also, before we end, um, is there anything inspiring you could say to the audience that are listening? Um, <laughs> being inspiring. Uh, Everyone gets stuck on this question. <laughs> uh, uh, um, if you want to get into music, I don't know anything along those lines. Music and that. Um, inspiring. Eat your greens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a big one. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, don't eat too much red meat. Yeah. Uh, if That's a guilty point. I'm, I'm <laughs> one of those. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, what I would say is don't yeah, do your own thing, really, because I think yeah. what I think people get sort of caught up in a bit, really, is being influenced by others and thinking mm. we've got to do that. Um, just do what makes you happy and, yeah. um, and do it to enjoy it because... The minute you start doing it thinking, oh, this is going to be my job or we're going to earn loads of money from it. Mm. And it's just the wrong thing to be doing it for, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, just have a good time. Have fun mm. doing it. That's the, that's, the mo- that's the most important thing, I think. Oh, cool. So, thank you um, for coming on the um, podcast. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. And uh, good luck with your future plans. Thank you very much. I'm sure I'll be speaking to you soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. When your new EP comes out. Yeah. From a blanket of earth I'll rise Adjust my eyes to the sun Like a newborn raised into the light Questions everything I'm not proud of my mistakes I guess that's part of growing With every single tear we ache First the drop And then the flow Wild, wild love Wild Contours that pave the streets Made us who we are, you and me And after all was said and everything was done What we can be sure is we cannot be sure I'm not proud of my mistake I guess that's part of growing With every single tear I ache First to drop And then the flood Wild, wild blood Wild, wild blood Wild
not proud of my mistakes I guess that's part of growing For every single tear I ache I first to drop and then I flow I first to drop and then I flow I first to drop and then I flow I first to drop, I first to drop, I first to drop you to those who listen to today's episodes please like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next episode so right now i'm going to play a song by kian smith so yeah in a bit Thank you.